Well, I'll tell you what. You can have two views. You can have a personal view or a national view. See, so a national view, I'd say, go in the common market. Now, it may, uh, if you like, be an adverse point of view from a personal interest, but all over pattern, go in the common market, no doubt. I've seen, been 15 years in America, I've seen what the buying power of 200 million people can do, and you have a better way of life, things will be better, wages will be higher, things will be dearer, but you'll have more money to spend. The life, life will be much better. If we're not in it, we're out in a limb, we're on our own, and it, maybe 100 years ago it was our, that was all right, but not nowadays. We need to be in with people. It's all right for Jack Lynch and the rest of them, but not for the people with the big family. Do, do many women think like that? Well, I think uh, the whole population thinks everything is going to go up, especially the food thing, what's mostly needed in houses. But aren't the farmers going to get bigger prices and all this kind of thing? Oh, the health of the farmers. We're only a small people. And our culture is very important to us. Surely it is. Has anybody else any time for our culture? I think it would be a suicide for us if we didn't, uh, if we didn't uh, go into it. You know, people in this area, anyhow, are nearly all farmers, and I think uh, if we don't uh, get in, that we're going to be left out in the cold. Some good men in Ireland on both sides, and uh, their views must be respected. It's now 10 years since Ireland joined the EEC. We joined in a spirit of optimism, with expectation of higher living standards, higher prices for agricultural products, new industrial markets, and eventually more jobs. There were those who felt that by joining, we would contribute to the ideal of a Europe united against the divisive nationalism of previous years, and others who claimed that membership would make the Irish border irrelevant. But had we any real understanding of what we were joining? Were we blinded by a heady mixture of idealism and unbridled self-interest? And since joining, have we made any significant contribution to the development of the community? The idea of the United States of Europe arose from the devastation of the Second World War. The Organization for European Economic Cooperation was formed to implement the U.S. Marshall Aid Plan. But it was the proposal in 1950 by the French Foreign Minister Robert Schuman of a European Federation which saw the real beginning of the European economic community as we know it. His proposal led to the formation of the European Coal and Steel Community, which integrated the coal and steel industries of France, Germany, Belgium, Italy, Luxembourg and the Netherlands. Then in 1957, the process of integration took a major step forward with the signing of the Treaties of Rome. In January 1973, the community was expanded from six to nine members when Ireland, the United Kingdom and Denmark joined. In 1981, the accession of Greece further enlarged it to 10, and negotiations are now in progress to enlarge it even further with the entry of Spain and Portugal. We had, as I told you before, we had certain reasons to create the community in the 50s and 60s. For other reasons, we need to have a strong community tomorrow. And that's what I mean when I'm speaking about the Europe of the second generation. And I think that we should do again what we did uh, what was it, 25 years ago, to have a new kind of Messina where all those newcomers like Ireland, uh, Britain and Denmark and Greece and tomorrow Spain and Portugal will sit together with us and say, what do we want to create now, between now and at the end of the century? The whole raison d'etre, the philosophy of, of free trade that emerged at the beginning of the 60s, the late 50s and the beginning of the 60s, recognized that, uh, that Ireland's development, its economic development, could only be achieved uh, within the framework of a widening world market and that uh, we must be a part of, of Europe and we must, uh, our insular position away at the extreme of Europe and with all our, de our high dependence and trade with Britain at that time, uh, we saw that we must certainly widen our, our markets and I think that was that influenced all our thinking at the time about Europe. It's a common market. It was that very thinking which inspired the referendum campaign. Under Sean Lamas, the Irish economy had begun to emerge from the isolated and protected position of the De Valera era. Jack Lynch was now Taoiseach, and he too was seen as propelling Ireland forward into a more modern and cosmopolitan society. Neutrality had gone hand in hand with isolationism, and the issue of national sovereignty was a crucial Let one. Me tell you this. Ireland's industrial revolution had been underway since the 60s. Although there had been major job creation in that period, there were those who felt that the Irish industry, 
could not withstand the harsh winds of European competition. They were convinced that unemployment would increase as a result of membership. There were also those who believed in European federalism. But above all, there were the farmers, and for most Irish farmers, the EEC spelt out the bonanza of a greatly increased market and higher prices. You've got to come out night and day to work, to canvas, to make certain that every farmer, without exception, goes to a polling booth on May the 10th and, of course, votes yes for the common market, ensuring his future. And we have come up with the staggering conclusion that if what is said in the white paper was to be achieved, we would need to provide 135,000 new jobs over the next five years. Now, do I have to say any more? And now they're down to one naked argument. They say, well, we don't like it about the prices. Sorry about that. We don't like it about the loss of jobs. That's a pity too. And of course, we're very sorry about losing our sovereignty. We're sorry about all those things, but we've no choice, you see. We've no choice. It's full membership or bankruptcy. If this country had to surmount a tariff as it would if we were outside the EEC, it would be impossible to protect the jobs and to guarantee outlets for our industrial or agricultural exports. Eamon de Valera as president gave entry his benediction. It was to change his constitution that the referendum was held. In the end, he must have realized that his Ireland was totally incompatible with the late 20th century. On the day, 83% of the electorate voted for entry. But to what extent the ideas and hopes of the campaign matched the European reality? Well, I think um, it's very natural for the Irish political scene to talk about things in, in highly political, highly literary terms, highly historical terms. Now, certainly, the economic arguments were used. Farmers were told that the community was going to be a bonanza, which it was for a number of years. But uh, I, I think that wider expectations about European unity, uh, Europeanism, if you like, were also raised, which not been uh, satisfied. Why do you think they haven't been satisfied? Well, I think, like all organisations, they have their periods when things go extremely well, which was the case for the European community initially, and then periods when things go very badly, as is happening economically all over the world at the present time, and as has been happening for the last several years. <coughs> so it's natural that you have euphoria followed by something like depression. Do you feel that the whole referendum campaign was a little bit oversold and was a little bit naive? Yes, I think there was a little bit too much euphoria about uh, agriculture in particular. People saw that prices in Ireland were low for producers. They were high in the community. Just People saw it as a movement from the low level to the high level and everything would, there would be no problems after that. But I think that was somewhat naive. Well, to a certain extent, there was a good deal of blurring of the issues because uh, you were either for Europe or against it, almost blindly. And uh, certain issues were highlighted. And um, I think those of us who, who saw in this narrow perspective of, uh, of, uh, of Europe, uh, you know, in, in the re referendum, we saw that the agricultural policy alone was a justification uh, for being in Europe.